Hi guys, a good morning to all, <clears throat> and I welcome you all to my channel LOCD. Guys, today we are going to do, or uh, we are not going to do, we are going to understand the logic so that we are able to print any star pattern. So this is the second star pattern, right? So I'm going in a very sequential manner so that you are able to understand. So this is a star pattern in the left star pattern and inverted form, right? So I'll quickly tell you the logic. It won't take much time, and you know you will be able to remember throughout your lifetime, right? So, guys. Yesterday, what we did first start with what we did yesterday because the logic is the same, right? So I told you only two things to take care of. If you want to print this particular start pattern, right? You have to find the number of rows, one, two, three, four, five, and find the number of columns, right? Divide it in the form of a you know a rectangular block or a square block, right? So we did it, right? So number of rows, number of rows were. Rows and columns were let's say were equal in this case, and they were they were five, right? And I asked you guys to visualize them in the form of if the number of rows and columns are equal, just try visualizing them. You know uh, that now you are going to divide it in the form of rows and columns. So one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. So you have to print this star in the form of this. Place over here, right? Into this particular pattern: one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, right? So this is a half kind of a square, right angle triangle. This kind of stuff you have to print. We printed yesterday itself, guys, right? So this was the logic, and we remember the logic very well. It was very easy, right? So now, what was the logic? I had to take care of two loops. The very first loop for loop was like I and T. I equals to one. Why I was taking it from one because it is just an incremental loop. It this first loop. This is the first loop, and it was it was always used to calculate or to run for n number of times. That is, how many number of rows are there, right? So there are five rows. So I equals to one. I less than equal to five. It will run five times, and it will keep on incrementing, right? This is what we did, and this is our base. I am not going to Touch or make any logical changes over here, because I want all of you guys to learn or try to understand the logic with the help of the way I am telling. Because there are ways I, in which you know I can make changes over here and to the second loop as well. But I'm not. I'm not going to even discuss that, right? Okay. So this is let's say your base loop or the first for loop, right? In which we are just running the loop for five times. Why five times? Because there are five rows. If there were four rows, we would have run it for four times, right? The printing part is done by the second loop. And what was the second loop? Second loop we took j equals one. Why we took j equals one and j less than equal to i? There was a reason behind that. I already told in my previous lecture, right? Why we were doing this? Because in first row we wanted to print only one time. In the second row we wanted to print twice. See the requirement over here was that in the first row it should be printed only one one time, second row twice, third row thrice it should be printed, right? So we implemented a logic that starting from one and if the row count is one, one to one, right? Then if the row count is let's say equal to two, then one it will the condition is true like one is less than equal to two. It will print one again. Two is less than equal to two. It will print two, right? When the row count was three, that is i equal to three. What it was printing? I equals one. One less than three? Yes. Then I got this j got incremented. Two less than three? Yes. It got printed two. Then three. Three less than equal to three? It got printed. In the same way, we were able to print entire thing over here, right? So in every line, right? This was your second loop. This is known as the printing loop. This is what I I I say in most of my lecture, right? The second loop is doing your printing part, and the first for loop is your base. It is just uh, you know doing the calculation or taking track of how many times uh, this loop will be run because there are five rows, so five times we have to print, right? So in this particular way, we printed yesterday, right? And today, what we are going to do is that we have to you know uh, guys print just the inverted form of it, right? We have to print the inverted form of it. It is also again very very easy. The first two logic we remember number of rows and number of column are five, right? So the first loop, 
it means that this loop is going to run for five times because rows are five, right? So the first loop or a base loop, which I calling out, let's say starting from one, I less than equal to five and I plus plus, right? So five times this loop is going to run. Now, how we are going to print? In first row, we have to print five. In second row, we have to print four star. In third row, we have to print three star. In two, in, sorry, in the fourth row, we have to print two star. And in the fifth row, we have to print one star. So this is our printing requirement that five, four, three, two, one, right? Here, the printing requirement was different. Printing requirement was same like one, two, three, four, five. First row, one time, second row, second time, two times, third row, three times, fourth row, four times. But over here, over here, the requirement is a little bit different, right? So I'm not going to touch the base loop. This is your base loop. That is the base loop. I can write a program by, you know, making changes in both the loops, but I'm not going to do that so that first your concept is cleared out right so this loop is going to run five times and number of times i'm saying because number of rows over here are five so five this much is acceptable right there is no learning into that or no concept or no tricky part right the only thing that you just need to take care of your requirement of printing so this is my second loop which is known as printing loop that is pl right so in this second loop i have to print five times right five times I have to print in the first line. I have to print five times, right? So let's say this loop land for one. I is equal to one, right? In order to print five times, what I can do, I can start the loop starting from five, right? J equals five. See J greater than equal to I, right? In the, in this, previous loop i was j was less than equal to i right but over here j greater than equal to i what it means just try to understand and then i'll keep on decreasing what it will do 5 is greater than equal to 1 what is the first value of i when the loop will run for the first time right 5 greater than equal to 1 print 1 right again second rule this is second rule loop that is running j value got decreased now it is 4 4 greater than equal to 1 yes again it got printed 3 greater than equal to 1 it got printed 2 greater than equal to 1 it got printed 1 greater than or equal to 1 1 is equal to 1 it printed 5 times over here right again this entire both the loop got terminated and now the value of i is 2 over here right now the value of i is 2 now see what will happen First, we printed 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This time, the value of i is 2. Again, we are starting from 5. See, we are uh, clever people. Since requirement was 5, so we will first print 5. Again, we keep on decreasing it, right? So, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We are, you know, binding this value with this value because so that we are not touching this loop at all. We are just making some changes in the logic. Initially, if it was 1 required, then 1 less than equal to 1, right? 2 less than equal to 1. This kind of stuff we were doing and we were incrementing it. But over here, we have already printed 5. So now when the loop runs for the second time, when i is, value of i is 2. So 5 greater than equal to 2. Yes, yes, it will print 1. Again, it got decreased. The value of 5 is now 4. 4 greater than equal to 2. Yes. Then value will get decreased j minus minus 3 greater than equal to 2, yes. 2 equal to 2, yes. The loop gets terminated, right? In the same way, when i will equal to 3, when value of i is equal to, let's say, 3, the third time, for the third row, you can say. In the third row, we have to print only 3 times, right? So, value of j is 5, 5 greater than equal to 3. So, first time it printed 5, then it value got decreased, it came to 4. 4 greater than equal to 3, yes, then again it got decremented minus minus 3 is equal to 3, condition is satisfied, it printed, right? Again, when you decrease it, 2 is not greater than equal to 3, the loop will get terminated over here. In the same way, 
we can keep on printing this particular stuff so this was a very very example you do not need to change your base look do not make any changes over here although we can and there are different ways but let's make you know a consistency in our code because we are learning it for the first time so we are not going to touch our base loop jo bhi changes whatever the changes are required we are going to make in our second loop right if requirement is to print only one time make sure you start with one one equal to one right because this is i is represents your row number right here requirement was to print star five times so we have started with five to one five four three two one Five four three two five four three five four, right? And this is five. So this is how this entire value get printed. I quickly show you the demo of it. It won't take much time. Uh, I'm quickly. We just need to type in. The only time I'll take is, is for the typing part, right? So i equals one i less than equal to five i plus plus. I am. This is a base loop. Do not do any kind of chair chart over here. Simply come to your second loop. I n t j equals five, right? J greater than equal to i and j minus sorry, sorry j minus minus, and we just have to print it out over here. Not l n. Why not l n? I have already told you guys difference between l n and s o p, right? Just print it over here, and since I want to print onto the next line, I'm just giving a blank system dot out dot print l n. Okay, we are going to quickly run it. See, right? So with the help of this simple logic, we are able to understand or print two pattern. In the same way, we are able to print the third pattern as well. Why I gave you this over here so that you are able to understand. See, one, two, three. This is our left pattern, right? Left star pattern, and what is your another pattern? Another is your right star pattern. That is this one. Now everything would be right aligned, right? But do you think you will be able to write a line? It no, you won't be able to write a line because I already told you find the number of rows and column, right? Divide them into number of rows and column. Imagine a square or a rectangle and see and just split it into two part. It means that more loop loop will be required, right? So what we printed right now, we printed this pattern one two three four five, right? Instead of that, I am just putting dot over here so that you are able to understand why I took this example. At the second star pattern, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, and one. Right. So in order to print this part, this third star pattern, you have to print first this part. We'll we I'll tell you in the next lecture, and then we can go about that. Right. So this was all about this particular lecture. I hope you guys are able to understand, and please stay tuned so that you are able to receive further notifications. Thank you for your time and patience. Thanks a lot, and again, have a very good day today. Thank you.